So I'm recording and there we go. We're here now. So hello everybody. My name is Adam. I'm going into my fourth year next year of computer engineering. So uh, I took this course last winter. I really liked it. COA 6 is one of my favorite courses um, that, that I've taken and it, it was a lot of fun. So I'm happy to be here and doing a tutorial for you guys. Um, first thing I'd like to mention is just that my notes are available on my website. So if you go to, um, I'll just type it. If you go to www.tutor.ca slash notes, you can see a big list of all my typed notes for all my courses. I like to do that to keep, uh, you know, keep organized. So you can find my notes there. Um, and then, um, yeah, I was basically, good. so I'll be referring to those. Um, of course they were from a different professor, so it's going to be, it's going to be, you know, slight, not different content, same course, but, uh, for example, we didn't call, <laughs> we called the states of multi-cycle, uh, fetch, decode, compute, memory, write. <laughs> that, those were our steps. Anyways, just the small details like that are going to be slightly different, but anyways, the course content's the same. So if you want to take a look there, you can take a look there. Otherwise, like I was just saying, my my uh, my plan for today is to do a review, review uh, single cycle, single cycle, and then uh, you know build build the multi cycle CPU cycle yeah, build whatever, build multi cycle you know step by step, and then from there. Um, we're also going to talk a little bit about, you know, the control signals, control signals, and then we can move on to pipelining, pipelining. And so this includes the, the actual like architecture, okay, Te architecture, I don't know, spelling it right, whatever. Um, and then, uh, also the, um, uh, you know, like hazards and hazard avoidance. So uh, yeah, so that's kind of my uh, my general general plan here for today. So uh, and, and then after this, you know, I, I doubt this will take two hours. So we'll probably take a ten minute break at at, at four o'clock. Um, so uh, uh, with the remaining time, uh, I have some examples. I just have some, but they're all pipelining examples. So it kind of could just be thrown into this. But uh, but yeah, I just have I have some examples from the textbook. And then uh, if anybody wants to send examples, um, you can send them to my email if you'd like, uh, which is, is it my Zoom name? What's my Zoom name? Is it just my name? No, it's my Zoom name. It's my Zoom name. Okay, oh, you can do Toronto, torontomu.ca, and then there you go. Um, so you can send it there. Okay, um, uh, unless there's any other questions, I will start with the uh, the review of the single cycle CPU. So we're kind of just going to, we're kind of just going to look at a well, we could build it. I mean, it's not too hard to build it um, step by step as well. And we can start from there. Um, but I, I guess the single cycle CPU was kind of the main, the main thing was um, from um, for the midterm or for, or for the midterm. So that didn't work. And yeah, if anybody has any questions, feel free to unmute or um, type in the chat. I'll have the chat open. So this is our single cycle CPU. I'm not going to build it. We'll just build the we'll build the uh, the multi cycle one. Um, so, uh, oh, maybe should I should I be recording on Zoom here too? Uh, should I record on Zoom? Okay, I'll record on Zoom just because Muse might want to record it on Zoom. I don't know, so I'll just record it on Zoom. So here's our single cycle CPU. Right, the whole point of of these CPUs, right, is to have a uh, instruction memory. Right, so instruction memory keeps track of all of our instructions. It's the program that was coded by someone, and we want to execute those instructions by doing whatever data manipulation that that is necessary. Right. So let's imagine we're doing like like an R type operation here. Right, an R type operation, some kind of let's say addition. Right. So we're gonna add. Um, and let's say we're going to add, you know, from, you know, whatever, whatever, register zero, register one, register two. So this is just an add. So what that means is that register one plus register two is going to be put into register zero, whatever that means. So let's say that's the instruction that's stored in memory at this location. First of all, how do we access this? We access this through the program counter. The program counter is the uh, location in instruction memory of our current instruction that we're trying to execute, that we want to execute next, basically, on the next clock. 
So what's going to happen is that the you know we have that instruction here. It's some it's some address, right? Some hex address, um, and it's going to feed into the instruction memory. And what's going to come out this side is the um, uh, instruction. This is the instruction, and that instruction needs to be decoded. Now this 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 picture just kind of decodes it by just splitting the lines up, right? It just says, oh, instruction 25 to 21 is goes here. Instruction 20 to uh, 20 to 16 goes here. 15 to 11 goes here and 15 to zero goes here. So, but this, you know, you can think of it as just like a module that does that, right? That's, that splits it up in, in, in an intelligent way. Um, uh, but it's always consistent, right? Like we only, we only ever need those bits here because of the structure of like an R type operation. I won't go over those things. Hopefully that's, that's okay. If, if not, feel free to ask if, if that's confusing, but R type operations have the, the different bit fields in the, in the, in throughout the instruction. Anyway, so, um, for an R-type instruction, we uh, uh, we don't use the op, right? We just use the func. So the op is uh, we we don't care about we don't care about the, the beginning because uh, the op is zero 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 zero, right? For for a uh, R-type. So anyways, we're decoding it. So um, uh, what's going to happen is we're going to you know the read register, read register, write register, right? The write register is going to be coming here, and this is our R zero. So this is the register we want to write to, right? So that's how we're going to be accessing that. And this register destination is going to be set to one. And all these blue little symbols are the control unit, right? So the control unit um, is some other module here, right? Which is control. And really it's just a, um, it's really just a um, lookup table. You just give it the op code and it's going to set all these numbers in the single cycle CPU. It's just a lookup table. So, uh, Again, let's just let's just keep going here. So R zero is going to be sent here, um, and then whatever R R one or R two is going to be sent here, probably. Um, whatever. Let's just say R one R two goes here, and then but definitely our destination is R zero because that's where it's that's where it's going to go. So and then down here, this is our um, uh, you know fifteen to zero. This is something like our. Uh, immediate field, right? This is like our immediate field, but we're not going to use this because it's an R type instruction. And so it's not an, it's not an I type instruction. So we don't need, we don't need this immediate field. We just need what registers we're trying to add and where is it supposed to go? So the, the data will still go here and it'll still do all this, but then these muxes or this mux basically will control what's actually going into the ALU here. So, so far we've covered program counter, instruction memory, decoder, and now we're accessing the register file. The register file has all of our 32 registers. So there's different purposes for all the different registers here, right? Just a reminder. Um, uh, let me find the list of the registers. Uh, where is it? Doesn't really matter, but it's just good to have a list of the registers. Yeah, they are. So um, yeah, I'll just refer to my notes here. So this is in my, this, these are in my notes. So there's our registers. And then these are kind of the general purposes of all those registers. So, you know, register zero, it just holds value of zero. Um, you know, RA, return address, um, KZ, K0 is for the kernel and that's for the, the operating system. Um, T is the general purpose ones that we usually use. Uh, A is for arguments and subroutines. V is for return values from subroutines and whatever. They have, uh, they have all these different things. So there's some, a couple extra details, but that's basically, basically it. So R, R0, R1, R2, these are just placeholders for some registers, probably T registers, right? Um, and, uh, and yeah, so, so what's gonna happen is that that information is gonna kind of propagate through this, right? Once we've decided what registers we want, it's gonna propagate through this. And the value from those registers is gonna be now sent out of here. So it's not the register, but it's the actual values. Values is value of R1, value of R2, right? So value of R1, value of R2. I can't write it because it's gonna be too small. But anyways, hopefully that makes sense. Value of R1, value of R2. And so value of R1, we don't do anything to, right? And then the the second argument here, it just goes through a mux because sometimes we do wanna add an immediate value instead, right? That's that's kind of the idea. We wanna sometimes add an immediate value. And so uh, if that's the case, then we, would, um, then we would want this value here, right? we would want to take this path, but we don't. So we don't, we just do this. Um, 
And yeah, so that's basically that's basically that. So it's gonna get to, go through the ALU. The ALU here is missing like a little op, right? So well, sorry here, I guess that there it is. So the op controls what the ALU is actually gonna be doing. And from here, um, the you know ALU does this. Now remember, this is all in one clock, right? This is all in one clock. Like the 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 the, the clock clocks like has a rising edge, and all this information is propagating through in the same clock here. So it goes through the ALU, and then it goes through the, um, it goes through the, uh, well, it could go through the memory if we're writing to memory, but this instruction doesn't write to memory. It writes to our register, right? So uh, uh, we can just go, we can just go past this, right? We just go around that. That's ALU result. Just goes past this through the mux. Um, and then this will go here. This would have a mem read, you know, mem read or mem write. This mem write would be set to zero in this case. So there's an example of our control, right? If for an R type operation like this, our, our control, or like for this R type operation, our control would set this mem write definitely to zero, as in don't let it write, because that's not what we want to do. We want to write to the register file. So propagating through here, it's going to go kind of like that. Mem to reg is going to be set to zero. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be set to zero. So it's gonna go all the way like this. And then it's gonna propagate through here, write data. And how do we know what register to go to? Well, it's this was selected. Our zero was selected here at the beginning, right? So on the clock now, right? So all this happens like the clock goes, so rising edge, the program counter is set to this instruction. Then we wait for all this to happen, all this to go through. And then here it gets here. Now we can clock again. We can clock again now, right? And um, and uh, we have our um, data instruction basically completely fully put together, completely fully executed. So it's going to be put into R zero. Now notice we didn't use a lot of this stuff. Now of course I I I I didn't mention a little bit of the stuff going on at the top here, right? But um, but yeah, so so I'll, okay, I'll mention that now. But like we didn't use the the memory register. We didn't use Oh, it's actually kind of it. We didn't use this section. This is for jumps or branches, whatever. Um, and uh, that's actually pretty much it. We used pretty much everything else, right? No, we didn't use, the, well, we used the mux. We didn't use the sign extend. Anyways, so now when you clock, the program counter has to go to the next instruction, right? So by default, that, that next instruction is four bytes, right? Four, four bytes, right? Yeah, four bytes further along in the memory, instruction memory. Um, because every because uh, because every instruction is 32 bits so you need four bytes and the instruction memory memory in general is um, byte aligned right not word aligned so that's an important thing it's byte aligned and that carries on so um to get to the next one we just we basically just send the program counter like while while all this is happening we just have another adder here and we do immediately pc plus four right so pc value plus four we add it to four and that's that's pc plus four coming out here and then we need to decide if we're also branching, right? So if we're branching, then we would also need to add the branch, whatever, whatever we're branching, right? So, so that would be, that would come out over here, right? Sign extend to 32 and then shift left by two, right? So if we're doing a positive branch or a negative branch, then that would be here. And then it, it, and then it's by four, it's because by how many words that we're doing. This, this multiplies by four. So, um, yeah, and so then and then coming in here, right? We would add that result, but we don't actually want to do that in this instruction, right? So it's it's just going to bypass it, and to to know which one is just again the control unit will just will just do that. It'll just know, okay, so it just wants PC plus four. And now when we clock, this register will write to the register, like that data will be written to the register, and when we clock, the new PC value will be loaded into the PC, and then all over again. So, uh. That's basically my review of, of the single cycle uh, CPU data path, right? Just with this example of add R0, R1, R2. Um, it's not super complicated, but it is complicated if like, like if the first time you're hearing all this, right? <laughs> um, but hopefully it, hopefully it makes sense <laughs> looking at it, like looking at the path that it goes through. Uh, you should definitely be able to draw this yourself. Uh, like you don't have to draw every single component, although probably would be good to draw every single component. Um, but definitely, like, given this picture, you should be able to draw how to get how the data goes through um, all the different components here. So, yeah, 
me make sure that my voice is in the recording because sometimes I by accident don't have my voice in the recording. It is good. So, okay. So, so that's the single cycle review. I think now let's just get into building the, the multi-cycle CPU, which is an advanced, more advanced version of this. Um, please anybody stop me if you have any questions or if you just want me to clarify something or explain something more or any comments, whatever. So, so the main drawback um, from this, yeah, can I go, can I go, please, okay, so I got two questions. Can I go over BEQ, uh, BEQ in the single data path, yeah, and what's the 0x blank blank? All I'm just saying is just like the PC is holding, is holding some instruction value here. That's all I'm saying. It's just, it's in I-N-S-T. It's holding some instruction value here, which would be a hex, usually in hex, and that's what's being fed into this instruction memory. That's all I'm saying there. Um, and can I go over BEQ? Sure, we can go over BEQ. So BEQ is branch if equal, right? So let's look at the uh, let's look at the data sheet just to remember how that exactly works. For me to also remember how that exactly works. Uh, where's the data sheet? Uh, did I pass it here? So here's the data sheet. So, oh, can you not see? Is it sharing? It, can you see the data sheet or no? Because Zoom is, oh, this is my screen share is paused. So probably you can't see. Okay, let me, let me just find BEQ quickly. And then uh, and then uh, we can go through that. Uh, where is BEQ? BEQ. Oops. Okay. I think it's unpaused. Yeah. One more question for the final. Are you supposed to memorize this diagram for design? Also, how are you supposed to design for any new type of instruction for this diagram, such as set less than? Yeah. So basically like adding another instruction is probably in most cases, just adding like one extra wire. And the way you wanted to do it is just like go through and see what it should be doing, right? You have to understand what the instruction does, right? Uh, so if you understand what the instruction does, then you go, just go through it and see what it should be doing. Oh, is there, is there supposed to be a cable here? Is there a cable missing that doesn't let me do set less than? Then you do that. We can do it. I'll, just, I'll, I'll show you. Um, but here's BEQ. So BEQ is an I type operation. It says if RS is equal, equal RT, uh, PC equals PC plus four plus branch address. Um, right. So we're definitely going to have to use this, right? We're definitely going to have to use this, this, this right here. Um, so remember, branch address is like is a signed, is a signed offset of what we want to use, right? So if, so this is like, you know, positive or negative, and it's going to offset us from our, um, uh, uh, yeah, from our uh, current PC address um, by this branch address. And it's on the condition that the register value at RS is equal, equal register value at RT. So RS and RT are just the, are these two, these two, these two, this is, this is RS and this is RT, or, whatever, one of them, it might be the other way, but it doesn't matter for this example. Um, so this is definitely our D, the destination, right? Cause that's where you're writing to. So, but anyways, we don't need RD cause we're not writing to a register in this case. Well, we are writing to a register, but we're writing to uh, the PC register. So that's not in the register file, right? So going through this, okay. So our instruction is, uh, our PC is pointing to an address in the register file. The, the address calls for BEQ, BEQ, um, uh, and then, uh, you know, RS, RT, and then also the branch address, branch, branch address, right? Which is how the offset that we're branching by, right? Am I getting that right? That That's how the branch works. Let me find an example here, because if I have BEQ, Oh, it's a label. Yeah, it's a label. Um, but that's anyways, that's some that's some label that you're branching to, right? Which needs to be added or subtracted, decided by the decided by the um uh, assembler. That's what I'm trying to say. So here's a BEQ example, right? So that's the opcode. It's four in hex. Let's say this is the uh this is the, we're checking if T two is equal to zero, right? Let's say that's what we're checking here. So T2 is our RS and um, I mean, yeah, T2, which is hex A, 
is our RS, and um, hex you know, zero, which is hex zero, is our RT. And then the label else is three instructions away. The assembler figures this out for you using the labels, right? So this is whatever. This is how far we're supposed to be um, going. And it's assigned immediate value. That's, that's figured out by the assembler. You don't have to figure that out. So, okay, so following through, right, we need to first check, right, if uh, the these two things are the same, right? If these two things, if these two values, RS and RT are the same. So the va we have to first fetch those values. So we're gonna fetch them from the register. Right? So that's gonna come through here, it's gonna come through here, and that's gonna be fed into the ALU because the way we check a condition, if things are equal, is we subtract them and see if it's zero, right? If they're equal, and then the, the difference will be zero. So um, we just carry through like that. And remember, like whenever it goes through a mux like this, you can just assume that the control unit knows what it's doing. The control unit knows that, okay, it's supposed to go through here. And the control unit is not hard to program for, for a single cycle CPU. Again, it's just a lookup table. So we just look up whatever the opcode is, and then we, we do that. Um, ALU control needs, needs a little bit more information, but the control unit is, is doesn't. So yeah, so that's that. Now, if we go, so you see how it gets the it gets the uh, funk value. Uh, is that funk value? Yeah, right or whatever. It gets the, I guess it gets the funk value. Whatever. So this uh, carrying on with BEQ, we have our uh, registered values being fetched from the register file. It's now they're now both going to the ALU, and the ALU will be set to subtract, right? So that would be part of this ALU op control here, right? Is that the ALU would be set to subtract. And we subtract them, and this zero flag would be sent to the control unit, right? This zero flag is sent to the control unit. Um, and, uh, or it could be even used directly, it could be even used somehow directly here with just a little bit extra circuitry. But yeah, I mean, it's basically sent to the control unit and the control unit, you know, confirms with this, right? Controls what this PC source should be. So if they are equal, this zero flag will be one if they are equal. And so in that case, this right here needs to be a one because we need to get this result being sent to the, the program counter. And basically after this, we don't need to write to any registers. We don't need to do anything. So all of this, all of this section is just skipped basically. We don't need any of this. Now we just have to focus on what's going on up here. But we've confirmed at this point that they are equal. The two registers are equal because the zero flag is one. So now we need to calculate that final address. So we need to do PC plus four. PC plus four always happens. Like you never avoid PC plus four. And then from here, uh, you're also being sent through another adder. The adder is getting the PC plus four, right? Here's PC plus four. And then here is basically the, the branch address, basically. Because, or, or like the, the offset that you want to do. So we take the immediate value. We sign extend it, which means if it's negative or it's positive, whatever, we, we sign it. You just take the the um, the leftmost bit and you just carry it on, right? To make it a 32-bit um, signal. And so, okay, so we have that now. We sign extend it. And then we also shift left by two. This is just kind of a, a, uh, uh, a like a uh, standard that, that, that we do here. So basically the immediate value is in is in words. That's how many words uh, uh, are going in here. So we sign extended and still how many words sign extended, but that's not how much you need to shift by, right? So if you want to go down down the list by two words, you have to go you have to go eight bytes, right? Eight addresses down. So you have to multiply or not eight. You have to go, if you go two words, you have to go 16. <laughs> no, PC plus four is four bytes. And so, no, eight was right. Eight was right. <laughs> Sorry. So yeah. So if we look at the instruction memory, instruction memory, you know, this is zero x zero zero zero, whatever. And then uh, the this is this is one byte, right? So this is one two three four, um, yeah, one two three four five six seven eight, and then we have one two three four five six seven eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's one word, right? A word is 32 bits. And so to get, if this is the instruction, to get to the next one, we have to go down one, two, three, four, right? Four times the number of words that we want to go. So shifting left by two multiplies by four. 
this is multiplied by four. So we turn the words into how many bytes we have to um, move down by. So we have to go four bytes down or four instruction addresses down. And then we add that to PC plus four and it gets sent to PC plus four over the next clock. So there we go. That's branch unequal. Hopefully that makes sense. Happy to answer more questions if, if it doesn't. Um, okay, and then, we, and then we have another question here for set less than. So um, for the final, are we supposed to memorize the diagram for design? Also, how are you supposed to design it for any new type such as set less than? For set less than, I think we sub and the sign extent alongside a high low input that is found from the MSB. Um, uh, high low input that is found from the MSB of the subtraction output. Yeah, which is which is like a negative signal is what you're saying, right? Um, uh, yeah, yes, yeah. Uh, so for a set less than, it'd be right back to register. Um, let me remember what set less than does. Set less than is, uh, um, where's set less than? Set less than is right here. So this is set less than. Set less than is an R type instruction. It, to the destination register, it either writes a one or a zero depending on if the RT is or RS is less than RT. Makes sense. So um, yeah, we can run through it quickly. It's not too bad to run through. So yeah, you need a, you need a negative flag. You need a negative flag. Yes. Um, that That's standard from, from these ALUs. They do give you negative flags. So um, the ALU result, um, you, there's just another flag here, which you would put as negative. So NEG. And that can go to the control unit. And, or or you can do maybe hook it up to a mux. Let's just run through it. Let's run through it. What, what's whatever's happening. So the command for SLT would be SLT, and then you have your destination register, and then you have your RS, and you have your um, uh, RT. So we're gonna set it if RS is less than RT, and the the register we're gonna set is RD. Okay, so that that instruction is again being fetched out of the instruction register. Over here, of course, we have RD. So I'll go through this a little, a little faster than before. RD, here we have RS, and here we have RT. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to fetch that data from it, right? And we want the source of the ALU to go from here. So this ALU source is going to be zero. And this is, there's no, there's no um, mux there. Okay, and then we, we perform the subtraction. Uh, which would be rs minus rt rs minus rt right um so if 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 the if the negative flag goes up if the negative flag equals one uh, that means that rt is bigger which is what we want actually right which is what we want right if the negative flag goes up that means rt is bigger we're subtracting something bigger here um so so that would go up and if that's the case then um, we would maybe here, we'd have to put another mux like this. Yeah. So we'd probably put, um, yeah. Okay. So we want a, we want a one or a zero to go to the right data port, depending on the result of this, right? Depending on the result of this, uh, this result doesn't really matter. We just set this to nothing or what we set it to nothing here. I don't know what to do with this. We'll deal with that in a second. Because the ALU result, we don't want the ALU result to go down. Because we don't want, like, we don't care about the actual value of the subtraction. Um, so we don't want the result to go to anything. Okay, so we can just have another mem2 reg. We can just have this here. And we can just hard code in, or maybe, yeah, I'll just put it here. So a two. And we can hard code in a one. Hard code in a one. Or, but it doesn't have to be one. It can just be the negative flag. Just that result can go in. Yeah, we don't need we we don't need we don't need any other mux. The result that negative flag. If if this the negative flag goes up, that's what we want to put in RD, right? Because if if that's true, we want to set it to one. If it's not true, then we want to set it to zero. So that negative flag, that's what we want to store. So that can just be another uh, another input to this mux here. That can just be another input to this mux. So uh, whatever the result of that is, that is what we want to write to the register. That's what we want to write to write data here. So there we go. That is adding set less than right there. It's basically adding 
connecting this negative flag to the mux. Because again, that result, okay, so if the subtraction, if we can perform the subtraction and the negative flag goes up, that means RT was bigger, which is which is when we want to set to one. If it's less than, then it's going to be, negative flag is going to be set to zero. So we need to uh, just use that output result and connect it right here to um, to this mux, which is going to then feed into the data register. And then once again, the um, control unit, the control unit is going to know to set for this specific control for the specific um, operation to set the mem to reg to to number two, to one one or one zero. Okay, so sounds good. Right, so that's that's adding set less than into this. Uh, it would write back to register. Yeah. Okay. So I think now let's move on to multi-cycle. But feel free to ask any more questions. I'm happy to happy to help. So uh, for the multi-cycle CPU, I think it might be good to now try to uh, you know just build it part by part here. I did that in my notes, so I think it'd probably be good to just carry you know copy that over and uh, see it together. And then we can uh, we can move on from there. So the single cycle CPU. Da, 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 da. Okay. So so the limitation of the single cycle CPU is that different components here take different amounts of time, right? So we can have uh, we can have a let's say for example this mem write is super long. Let's say this takes the longest amount of time. Some operations don't even need to write to memory. They only need to write to registers. But since the mem write takes the longest amount of time, we have to make the clock slow enough so that it always has the time to execute mem right the clock itself has to stay a consistent rate like we can't dynamically exactly change the clock like that but we can like like for example if if uh if we do an instruction that doesn't need mem right uh we could speed up the clock because it doesn't need to take that much time to get through all this um, we, we can't exactly do that so precisely but what we can do is we can kind of like pretend like we have a dynamic clock by just starting the next instruction um, uh, at the right time. And by basically breaking this up into a bunch of different um, uh, parts, a bunch of different parts, and kind of having checkpoints along the way. So we can't actually control the clock to make it faster, at different, like dynamically like that for different, for different instructions. We can kind of pretend, and that's what a multi-cycle CPU is. You're breaking it into multi multiple cycles. Um, so yeah, let's, let's give it a try. So we're going to start with the, the program counter, because I think that's a good place to start. So we're going to start by drawing the program counter. In fact, I'll draw it a little smaller. It's, it's going to get it become a big picture. So we're going to start by drawing the program counter. Program counter is clock activated, right? Uh, and it gets a new input value and an output value. OK, so the program counter is going to point us to our instruction register, right? Um, and what we're actually going to do is we're going to uh, have just one memory. No instruction, sorry, I said instruction register, I meant instruction memory. So we, we have instruction memory and data memory here. But what we're going to do is we're, we, we know that this memory is not being used for anything else at the moment. Uh, so because it's still part of the same instruction. So we're, what we're going what we're going to do is we're going to just combine the instruction memory and the data memory into one unit. We couldn't do that here, right? Because it has to have an address. You have to feed it an address. And if you're feeding it already the instruction, you have to still be feeding it the instruction even when we get to here for everything to know what it's doing. But if we break this into stages where there's checkpoints, then it doesn't have to remember that. It's, there's memory along the way. So we're going to have just one, um, one in memory for instructions and for data. So we're going to draw that here, right? So the this is the, well, I guess, um, okay, so let, let's just draw it like this. Maybe I'll make it a little bigger. It doesn't have to be that big, I guess. But anyways, so this is, um, actually, I'll move it to the side a little bit. We're going to be playing around with this picture a lot, so erasing things. But I, I like building it step by step because I think it gives you a good picture of how you would come up with this yourself. So this is, uh, I'll just say ADDR in, right? Address in. What address in memory are we trying to get? And the memory module will also have a data in and, of course, a uh, mem out. Right. So we have that. Now, what we want to do is we want to now, what, what's going to come out of this register of this memory module right now is the current instruction, right? That's, that, that's what's going to be coming out of the memory module. We need to save that somewhere because we might need to use this module again for something else. For example, saving data. 
So we should save the instruction so that it doesn't have to keep remembering. Like it doesn't have to keep outputting this. So what we're going to do is we're going to just call this one clock. This is one clock going through like this and then feeding this into another register. And this is the instruction register, IR, instruction register. And there's, you know, an enable pin IR, right? Right, that we can control if we want to actually write it. Because we don't always want to write to this register, right? We only want to write to this register when there is an instruction coming out of this memory. Other times, there could be data coming out of this memory, right? So maybe we should have another register called data register, right? And this is if there's data coming in. And it's also, uh, it's also a clock enabled, and there's also data register write. So there's two things that can come out of the memory. It's instructions or data. And so we, we want to store that so that the actual memory module doesn't have to keep doing one thing. I'll, I'll actually, like, okay, I won't delete it, I guess, but uh, usually I draw that later. But anyway, I thought that just made sense to draw it now, right? That there's two things that can come out of this. Okay, so we're going to do a lot of rearranging in this picture. So, that, so the next step, if everybody's with me, you know, feel free to stop me or ask me anything if you have any questions. So we have the program counter, which is giving us our instruction address. We're fetching that instruction from the memory, and we're going to be now storing that into the instruction register. That's one clock, right? That's one clock. And that's called the, the fetch step, which I'll call F. I know I think you call it something different, but it's the same thing, right? So the, the fetch step is F. I think you call it fetch, F-E, fetch, fetch execute or something. I don't know what, what F-E stands for, but I think that's what the what your teacher uses, but anyways, so the fetch stage is F. Uh, again, that's one clock. Now we're going to uh, go into the decode step. Now we need to understand what's the instruction that, that's actually being asked of us here, right? So we're gonna be feeding this into a um, decode, decode instruction. Decode, well, that actually has to be bigger. So make it bigger. I'm going to copy along with what I have written. So uh, there you go. Okay, that's way too big. <laughs> I have to I think I have to make all this smaller because it's going to get way bigger than it already is because we're going to draw the whole thing. So this is the this is the decode module. Right? And the decode module takes in the instruction from the instruction memory and it's not clock activated. It's just going to organize the organize the cables. So basically, we're going to have all the different parts coming out. We're going to have the uh, we're going to have uh, funk coming out here. We're going to have RD. We're going to have RT. We're going to have RS. Right? These are all things that you could get in an instruction. You also have your immediate value, immediate value. Um, you also have your opcode at the top there. And then you also have for J type instructions, you have the the address. Right? You have the address for J type. So that's everything you could possibly want. R type instructions are op, rs, rt, rd, and func. Uh, well, everything has op, so I'm not going to mention that. I type instructions are you know rs and rt, or yeah, rs and rt, and then immediate, and then uh, for J type it's the op and add the address. I'll say addr just so that it's not confused with like adding. Everything that I'm going to highlight in purple is the control module. Um, the PC should also get one, but we'll add that after, and then that's the con that goes to the control module. Uh, clearly, also this, the, you know, this this has a control signal of like mem, mem read, mem write. So hopefully that makes sense so far, right? We're fetching the instruction, we're saving it in the instruction register, and we're going to decode it now to know what to do. Okay, so let's say we're doing an R-type instruction, right? Let's again just do an add, just just as an example, just to go through this. I think that's what I did in my, um, yeah, I think that's what I did. Anyways, let's just say we're doing an R-type instruction. So R-type instruction is going to be, let's say, add. It's R D, R S, R T, or maybe the R, the S and the T are backwards, whatever. Um, that's it. So we're adding these two and we're storing it into the destination. Do we need S H A M T? I'm not sure what that is. Shift. Shift amount. Oh yeah, shift amount. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Um, I guess so. Yeah. Why did I not draw that in my picture up there? Yeah, that makes sense to me. There should be shift amount right here. Um, so it does say decode module. 
And then this is going to be, yeah, we just call it shift, but yeah, S-H-F-T, whatever, say shift. Um, and so that's, that is going to go somewhere after. Yeah, you're, you're right. So now that we've decoded, that's the decode step, right? Going through. So we clock. So now this value has the instruction and it's going to propagate through this in one clock. And then these values now are going to store whatever we want, whatever we need, right? Depending on the, the, the current instruction. So that's the fetch step. Uh, that was the, that was the fetch step. That's kind of, it's kind of here, right? That's the, this is the fetch step. And then this is the decode step. So D so decode is the D step. Um, so now we need to access our registers, right? So that's going to be our, that's going to be our next step here. So we need to have access to our register file. So that's what we're going to draw next. We're going to have our register file here. So our register file is just going to be a square. I don't know why I haven't been using the square tool. Yeah. So don't worry. So, so the, yeah, the, the terms highlighted in purple are going to the control, to the control unit. That's what I'm just saying. The control unit has access to those. They have control over it. We're not going to, we're not going to send it anywhere. It's going to control or coming from control. Um, and then we'll talk about the, the flow of the control, like what the control unit is going to do, but, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to draw a wire to it is basically what I'm saying. Is. So, yeah. So, so this is the register file. The register file is going to have access to RS, RT, I say TT, R, RT, and RD, right? It needs it needs those input values, and 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 clearly at, at the moment we're just gonna wire these all up like this, right? Because the RS, RT, RD values are gonna go from there, and the register file also has a few um, uh, inputs, right? So the uh, data D, the data that's gonna go to register D, so I'll call it data D. Uh, that's gonna be that's an input, right? And then we also have some outputs. We have data coming from register S, that's an output. We have data coming from register T. That's an output. And then we have, it's, it's also clock. And then we have our, um, uh, we have our reg, uh, reg write. Right, register write. Just controlling if we're writing or not to this register in this clock. Basically, should this value go to register D? So this is the register file. When I'm done, I'll show you the very like the clean version I did of all this. So I I know it's a little a little my handwriting is not the best, uh, but I did I did a clean version and I'll, I'll show you that all after. I just like building it together here. I think that's that's a good way to do it. Um, so if you want to take a screenshot after, do it after, <laughs> do do it later. So or go to my notes. So uh, yeah, so now we have access to the register file on the next clock, which is the register fetch, right? Um, what did I say? The the yeah, which, which, the register fetch. Uh, we're going to be fetching the data from the registers and we're going to now know what the data is coming out of this. In fact, so for the add example, we're going to know RS and RT, the actual values, the register file at RS and RT, like the actual values, not just the, the, the addresses. So if it's an add instruction, then that now needs to be sent to the ALU. But what we're going to do is that we, we want to just store this value somewhere, right? We've stored the instruction right? We've sorted here. Now we want to store also the, um, uh, the values that came from these registers. That's kind of like the theme here that we're using in this multi-cycle CPU to help us, um, with reuse of components is to store the values along the way, because now this is completely free, right? I'm going to sneeze. No, I'm not. I'm not. Oh, I am. No, I'm not. Okay. Um, this is completely free. Now, like we can, this can be done. This can do anything. In fact, it could for specifically, it can write to memory if, it, if we wanted to, um, because we've stored the instruction here. So here we also want to free this up, right. To, to be able to do other things like write or whatever. Right. So what we're going to do is, uh, we're going to, um, uh, send these outputs into basically registers. They're really latches, but basically register called register a. And this is going to be uh, to register B. I think we're going to change that. Now, you know, remember, there's going to be a bunch of muxes in here, right? That's going to keep adding things. But but that's uh, that's the idea. And again, this is to control. And then these both have control latches, which I didn't, I didn't put for some reason. Why did I not put that? I didn't put till the very end. I don't know why. Anyways, these have, uh, these have enables as well. So this has, you know, A enable. And this has B enable. 
and we're, you know, we're giving a lot of just, we're just saying like the control will, will deal with this, right? That's, that's it. But it's okay. Cause once we know how to design the control unit, then it's not, it's not too bad. So now we've stored it and that's one clock, right? So this is the fetch decode and then, you know, register kind of access step, right? Um, so we're going to access it from, well, I guess this is, kind, this is kind of the decode step, I guess, in a way, this whole thing's the decode step, because this is going to happen in one, in, in one clock, right? We're going to access, well, the clocks are going to, are kind of getting screwed up. This is, these aren't actually registers. These are latches. Um, but anyways, this is the decode step. You can just kind of think of it like this is the decode step. So now we need to send this to the, to the, the compute step, right? We need to actually compute this sum. So, uh, that so we'll do that. And so that is, let me make sure I'm getting the order of everything right here. Let me look here. Yeah. So we're now going to send this to the ALU. Just open my notes back up. Nice clock cycle. Yep. Just verifying that, you know, matching with my notes. So I'm going to move this over, but I'll probably have to move it back over again at some point. So we'll see. Um, so, okay. So, so this out input, I'm going to put a little bit of room here cause we're going to have to draw some stuff in the middle there. And then this input is going to go here and this is going to go to our ALU. Just draw that a little nicer. And this is our ALU and the ALU is going to get an op, which for the sake of our type operations is just a, uh, it's not going to draw a nice angle for me. No straight line, straight line, straight line. Uh, for the sake of our type operation is the op, the op code is just, is just funk, right? Again, we're just focusing on our type operations right now. And then we're going to have a zero flag and a negative flag, which is just going to come out like this. And again, that's going to kind of go to control or it's going to go to whatever. Maybe, maybe it won't go directly control, but it'll go somewhere. So now out of this, out of ALU out, we're going to get the result of the, the, the addition, right? And we again want to latch that, right? We again want to latch that. Um, with, with, with a register. So ALU out. And the reason we want to latch it is again, because we just want to be able to reuse this component. For example, the main way that it's, that it's being reused in, in um, a multi-cycle CPU is that we use this to compute PC plus four, right? So, uh, you know, we need to latch this output so that we can, you know, know what to know, what value to use. So we can save it. Cause it's not always the same number here. That's going to be coming out of this in the same instruction. It's not always the same operation or instruction here. Um, so yeah, so now this ALU out, of course, has to connect to the uh, register, right? Because that's where we're writing to. We're writing to the register. We're writing to the register. We're writing to, writing to register D. And that's it. So that's basically all our type operations. All our type operations are kind of done now, right? We had a de uh, we had a fetch step, we had a decode step, and then we had a compute step, right? So we had a compute step, which is over here. So that's compute, compute, uh, which is step C. And then at the end here, we just had a register write step. So I'm going to say W or register write, register write is w there was no need to access this memory again right because we didn't do any kind of well uh operation like that now there there are like we'll get into it we're, just, we're done there's still there's still you know there are obviously operations that need to need the the memory here so this is not a uh, all-encompassing cpu yet in fact pc plus four doesn't really work either right because we're just there's no new value coming in so we need to still deal with pc plus four and we still need to do with a few more things but just executing the read instruction uh, the R type instruction of add is done. This will do it. So um, this is not too much different from a single cycle CPU, except for the fact that it has a bunch of extra registers here. That's really all that's really all that's different. So we're now going to, you know, leverage these extra registers um, to, to, you know, make it a better CPU, make it work more efficiently. So we're going to do that by, first of all, we're going to implement this PC plus four. So we need to compute PC plus four to get the next instruction. Uh, we can do this using the ALU once we know our new PC value. Um, so for the first two instructions, and by the way, this is four clocks, right? Fetch, decode, compute, write. Four clocks. 
in general, we assume that all instructions have five clocks. When we're doing pipelining, we just assume all five, five clocks. But this had four. Crash, decode, compute, write. Register, write. Uh, it was four clocks that we're getting to. Now, that might seem slower because before you could do this instruction in one clock. But now we're avoiding the memory module. We can make that clock. We can make. We can use a shorter clock, right? We can use a shorter clock, which is the the speed of the that longest segment there. And so, assuming this clock is let's say five times faster, then we have an improvement. We have an improvement here in in uh, in speed because it only took four clocks. Now, if you needed the memory module, then you need to use all five clocks. And so, if it's five times faster, but you need to use five clocks, it's exactly the same as a single cycle CPU. So basically, worst case is a single cycle CPU here. With some other extra, a little, a little bit slower than a single cycle. Okay, so so let's continue now. We need to do the PC plus four uh, for the first two clocks. No instructions need the ALU, so we can use it to compute PC plus four. Um, the organization of this is done using the control unit. So basically, what we do is we know that in the fetch or decode step, whatever, um, we are going to want to add four to the PC value. Actually, you know what? Maybe to keep drawing here. Should I? Yeah, okay. I'll just, I'll just continue drawing like this. I just don't want to get too messy. Yeah, question? Yeah, like zero, the zero flag and the negative flag. So it's just, these are just flags. These can go to control. Like the ALU is just the standard that it has these two, right? It's a flag that'll go high if it's zero or a flag that'll go high if it's negative. No problem. Um, yeah, so okay, so so continuing on now, we need to do PC plus four, which means we need to get the value of the PC to the ALU. Uh, too far, <laughs> gotta move this decode. The value of the ALU, the value of PC, I mean, to the ALU. Now, we of course have to com com you know combine it with a mux, because we can't just go, we can't have two inputs, right? What did I do here? I said zero was from the PC and one was from A. And now we need just a ALU, a, what do I call it? ALU source A. And that is just a control signal that the control unit will, will deal with, right? Depending on, to know which signal to, to pass through. So for the decode step, that's, it's gonna be PC that's gonna be going through, right? The value of the PC that's gonna be going through. And then the other input we need here is four. And we can just hard code it to be a four. Um, so if we just hard code it to be a four here, this is zero one. I'll send this through zero. It's what I did. So I'll just stay with what I wrote. I mean, it doesn't matter if you send it through zero or one, right? It'll slightly change your, your control signals, but it won't change the actual effect of the thing as long as your control signals match. So, uh, and this is of course going to have our ALU, ALU source B, okay, ALU source B. It's right there. So what's going to happen when we do the decode step or the fetch step is we're going to have ALU source A to be zero and ALU source B to be one. And what's going to happen, oh, and, and then the opcode as well. Sorry, I forgot the, we need to control the opcode, right? So that's that's another thing which we have to add here, which I'll, which I'll talk about in one second. Uh, but assuming the opcode is adding somehow, right? We're going to do something over here in this corner. Um, then the what's going to be in this latch, right? What's going to be in this latch at the end of the, uh, well, basically what's gonna be in this latch after one clock is going to be the um, PC plus four value. But why latch it here when we actually just wanted to go into this register? It's kind of the, the thing, right? We don't, need for, we don't need for that PC plus four to go in this register. We can just directly send it to this register. So that's what we do. We take this cord, we take this wire here, and we, bring it to PC. Why make it go into this register? I mean, it will with the clock, but I guess you can control that with a ALU out control, right? What did I call it? I called it ALU latch. I called it ALU latch. That's another control signal. So instead of writing to that register, just write back to the PC immediately. So two long wires, but that's basically it. Uh, but now what's happening here? We're, we're, I'm saying we're adding, but how are we making that happen? Right now it's connected to funk. Funk is nothing right now, or it's, it's, it's n n nothing to our knowledge right now. 
So we're going to add that control. And basically, there is uh, just an ALU control module. All right, there's an ALU, ALU control module, which can just decide what it needs to be. But it takes it takes as input the func. It might may or may not use it. Um, and then there's also just a control signal, which is just ALU op, which to be clear is not the op code of the ALU, but that's just what it's called. It's called ALU op. Let me write that better. A L U op. And that's gonna go right there. Okay, so just to just to highlight like what we've done up to here, I think. Oh yeah, and let me just do PC enable here. Well, I'll explain that in a second. Uh, I'll, I'll explain it now. So we, we don't always want this value. We don't always want this value, the output of the ALU, to be put into the PC. So we need to have a PC enable. So PC enable pin here. So if that's high, then it will write it. And that's only high during the fetch stage. Right? And remember, it doesn't really matter what this value is because we've stored the instruction here already. We don't need to keep track of this value anymore. We've stored the instruction that we're trying to execute here already. I think now is a good time to bring out my nice pictures because this is getting really messy. And I think it's going to be a good review to get back up to this point. And then, uh, yeah, okay. So, so we started with, uh, can I just copy the pictures? Is it going to be nice to me? It's not. So I'll just take screenshots. So we started with the program counter. That was step one. Put that there. Then we had, we added in the uh, program counter attached to the memory module. Well, we added in the memory module. The memory module uh, got some, got an instruction register attached to it, along with some control signals that are around there. Then what we did is we added the instruction decoder. Right, so all that's done here is I've just added the instruction decoder. After the instruction decoder we decided that it was time to start sending that information into the register file. So we added the register file like this control signals around just to make it work. Uh, from here on, we have a little highlighting to help just see, cause there's a lot going on. So the next thing we did is we added these latches on the outside to store the result from the register file. Next thing we did is we added the ALU Right, coming out from there, along with the latch, along with the res uh, return value back to the back to the uh, register file. Then we took the value of PC, added some muxes, and made it so we can compute PC plus four. But now we're, we're still not adding, so we need to have this ALU module here to help control what Funk is doing, or what the the, the ALU is doing. Potentially based on Funk, potentially not. So this is where we got to. Um, oh no, one more step. We got we got one more further, which was which was right here. And so now, really, truly, it can can, can comp compute all R type. Well, it can compute R type operations. I don't know about uh, I can't say confidently all R type operations, but R type operations like add, uh, where it's just some sort of computation, um, and it can go on to the next instruction. So that is our you know beginning of our multi cycle CPU. And the important thing to notice here is that if we don't need to use the memory module, we don't use the memory module, right? And that will that will allow us to use less clocks. Additionally, we don't need another ALU or at least an adder to compute PC plus four. We're just going to use the ALU to compute PC plus four, and it's going to be all controlled by that ALU control module or ALU control and also just the the general control module. If ALU source A is zero and ALU source B is one, then the ALU out is PC plus four. Source A is zero, source B is one, the, and, and, and also we're in the fetch stage, which would, which would, uh, which would allow the opcode to be one, uh, to be add. So if we're in the fetch stage, then the opcode will be one. That's, that's decided by the control unit. Then this is PC plus four coming out like this. Yeah, this is PC plus four. Exactly, right? Um, yeah. That's right. Perfect. Okay, so now we're going to move on a little bit and we're going to talk about I-type operations. How do we add I-type operations onto this? And I'll, I'll just keep drawing on top of this, right? So 
because it's just nicer to draw on top of this. So what we need to do is we need to add, okay, so I type operations, reminder of how I type operations uh, look, right? This is what an I type operation looks like. We have an op code, we have a RSRT, and then we have our immediate. Remember that our RT is the destination register. Kind of annoying to remember, but our RT, RT is the destination register when you only have two registers in your in your instruction because there's no RD anymore. Make sure recording is still fine. Yeah, still fine. And if there's any, if ever you can't see something in the corner here, tell me because <laughs> I know my face is there. So anyway, so now we have RT is our destination, immediate has to be taken into account, and RS is our one of our sources of information here. Okay, so first thing we need to do is we need to, con you know, instead of R instead of RD going to RD, we need RT, RT, right? Yeah, we need RT to go to RD because RT is now our destination for I type operations, just for I type operations, right? Um, how about I, uh, instead of writing on this, I'll just, because I want to keep it in order, I'll just copy this and then move this down. So again, instead of R, instead of R D being the destination, R T is now the destination. So we need to have a mux here, right? We need a mux. I'll just put a mux like this. I'll draw it again in a second. Uh, you know, zero, one. And now this is our destination register. This is our destination register. And we just have a control signal here, which is register destination. And that's just a control signal. I guess it's actually an input signal. Oops. It's an input signal uh, into the mux there like this, right? Okay, so that's our, that's it. Now that we have the correct destination selected, we also need the immediate value to go to the ALU, right? Because that's basically where, that's basically where it, it, it goes. So um, uh, the immediate value should be sign extended, right? Because that immediate value is, is a signed number that we want to deal with, add or subtract. So let's say we're doing add immediate here and we'd want to um, add the immediate value sign extended though. So we're gonna send this through a sign extender, it's just a block, just a sign extender. And that is gonna be going to the ALUB. And so we just need to add another little input here for ALUB, two, right? And, and there we go. So ALUB gets another input, another possibility of what it can, uh, send to the other input of the ALU there. See if I'm missing any explanation. So, um, uh, load word is the example I use in my notes here. Um, so just, just to you know, highlight that, that's, that's what we just did, right? Just so that you have it here. So you, you can see it in nice, nicer writing. ALUB would need one more select line. Yeah. I mean, it would be, I mean, yes, but we would just say that ALU source B is still there and it's just, it's, it's two wires. Yeah. It's two wires. It would be two. It's a, it's a two bit signal now. Yeah. It's definitely a two bit signal. Um, but it, you wouldn't say like ALU source B1, ALU source B2. You just still call it ALU source B and, but it's, it's a two bit signal now. So in, in practice, it would be two wires that are there. Um, Okay, good. So uh, this is uh, uh, this is where we're at. Let me read my just I just, in case I said anything interesting in my notes before that I forgot. The command for load word specifies a destination register for the word RT and also an address in memory RS with a signed offset stored in immediate. We need to first add RS plus immediate, which is what we're going to do with the ALU here, right? RS plus immediate. We're now able to do that on the compute step. Because we still have to fetch decode, and now on the compute step, we can get uh, our the value of RS by setting ALU source to one, and then we can get the value of the signed extended immediate by setting ALU source B to two, or to one one, whatever, or to one zero. <laughs> Keep forgetting, and and then uh, from here, that's going to be sent to the ALU, and the ALU op control that'll just be dealt with by the control unit. It'll know what to do. It'll know the add. Um, so yeah, that's basically, that's basically that. Oh yeah. Okay. Sorry. And so load, there is a reason I did load word, right? So load word, 
load word um, is an I type operation. So it specifies R S R T and then, you know, some, some offset, right? That's, that's the immediate value. So uh, I forget the exact, uh, I forget the exact syntax for it. Let me try to find it. So it's like, uh, I'll find it here in my notes. This is so load word. Okay, so load word eight off of undo store word. Yeah, so so load so it's like this load word. It's just the order I always forget. Load word. Okay, the example I have here is uh, load word ra eight sp eight up from the stack pointer. Yeah, so the R, the R, S, and I guess I'm already, I just said the same thing. And then you have the, so the, in, the offset, so I'll say off in brackets R, no, this is the R, D, and this is the, this is the R, T, and this is the R, S. There you go. Oh, I can check the, I can check the sheet. I forgot I can check the sheet. <laughs> but, okay, let's just check the sheet, because why, why deal with this? Um, uh, what are we doing? We're doing... Uh, load word, so load word, load word, load word. RT is the memory address of RS plus sign extended. Yeah. Right. So RT is the destination and RS, there you go. So this is how you would, this is how you'd write it, right? You'd write it like this. I guess you'd put a comma here. So you say the register you want to write to and then the offset and then what register you're grabbing from. So for example, if I want to access something that's four bytes away from the stack pointer and I want to save that into T0, I'd say load word where T0 and it's four bytes away from the stack pointer. And so that's my load word. I'm assuming that's, you know, you've, you've seen assembly already in this course. So hopefully that's okay. Um, but just to get it straight, what registers we're using here. So now incorporating that here, we're loading word from memory. So now we need to access this memory module again, right? We need to access this memory module again. And so to access it, we need to provide it with an address that we want to access memory from, right? We, need, we want to access memory from uh, you know, addressed by a certain address. And that address is computed here by RS plus sign extended immediate, right? We've just computed that. That's in ALU out. That's now after the clock. It's an ALU out, right? So that's our, uh, that is our uh, uh, latch now, which has this value, R, uh, register value of RS plus sign extended immediate. That now needs to be sent. The way I drew it in the picture is I drew it like this. So that, come on, make it straight line. There you go. It now needs to be sent to the input of the memory module, but through a latch, uh, through a mux, through a mux. And this we just call I or D, instruction or data. So it's, a, it's just a one bit signal. It's just gonna control if it's an instruction coming in or is it data coming in. So now we're able to send that address back to memory and on, on the next clock we're going to get that out of memory out but we don't want that to go to the instruction register anymore what we want to do is we want that to go to the data register which is not on this picture we want that to go to the data register i mentioned that at the beginning right sometimes data comes out of the memory module sometimes instructions come out of the memory module so here data came out of it so we want to store that in the data register and that data has to, well, probably in the next step. Yeah. That data has to be sent to the destination, right? DD. So we still call that DD. There's no DT because the data destination is what that is. Data destination. And that never changes. That's, that's always that. And again, just, just through a mux, just through a mux. Because sometimes, sometimes we want this data to go through. And sometimes we want the data from the memory to go through. And so we just call that mem to 
rag. Again, drawing it nicer just because my my handwriting is not is not superb on this. So we added that wire underneath here for sign extended and that there, and then we we added this wire to get for the mux like that to get control of the input of the memory module. And then we took the output of the memory module, we stored it in a data register, which selectively will go into the register file based on the instruction we're doing. For load word, we're done, basically. For store word, we actually only need to add basically one wire. So this could be like a question that you have on the exam, right? Which would be like looking at the circuit, you know, add, make it functional for store word. Let's think about what store word needs, right? So store word is very similar, right? So you'd say store word, and then it's what you're storing. So it's, let's say R, um, uh, R S and where you're storing it, right? R S is it assigned immediate R S? Yeah. And then and then like some offset and then where you're storing it. Uh, offset of what? So offset of what? So that'll be R T there. And that offset is your immediate value basically, right? So this is what you're storing, and this is where you're storing it. So if you want to store it at the stack pointer, you'd say zero SP here. Whoops, you'd say zero SP here. Whatever you want, zero SP. So the only difference is now we need to, we need to be able to connect to this data in, right? We need to be able to write to memory. What we want to store is, oh no, I said that backwards. This should be, the thing we're trying to store is RT, and where we're storing it is based off of RS, sorry. Just had that backwards. So the thing we're trying to store is in register RT, which means after fetch decode, that value is now right here, right? That is the value, the register file at hex RT right there. And that is what needs to be sent to data in. Okay. So the, that's only some of the battle because what about actually computing the address, right? We said we have to compute the address. Well, let's see if all the infrastructure is in there to compute the address. What does computing the address do? It's getting the value of RS. Okay, fetch, decode. We got RS coming out here, right? Then we need the assign extended immediate offset. Okay, we can just do that here. Add, right? That's compute step. That's a compute clock, right? Keep in mind, this is held here. This value is held for as long as we want it to be, really. This value is held. Um, so, and then that's going to be sent to here. And then that ALU result, which is the address, right? Which is the address that we're going to be storing it to, is going to be sent right there. So the infrastructure is already there. Like the architecture, I guess I should say, not infrastructure. The architecture there is already there for store word. All we had to do was be able to connect to the data in. So it was just one wire to, to enable... Actually, I guess I'll, I'll leave these red wires here, but it was just one wire. Uh, yeah, for sure. We can, we can go over that. We're almost done. I just have a couple more pictures. Um, so this wire is all we added for the store word. Um, J type instructions are, I'll just draw it here. I mean, basically J type instructions just need to get the add value, which is just for our address value, I guess I'll call it, address value, which comes from that part of the instruction decoder. And then it has that computation it does, right? Where it's like it it ors it with something and ands it with something I forget off the top of my head. But basically just, it's the way we do it so that it has a, a easier to use offset or a more versatile offset. Anyways, this computes it. We just, we just say there's a module that computes it and that value needs to be sent to the PC again through a mux. So that's all for a jump. Let's just draw the mux like this. Zero, 01 or yeah, that's it. And again that has some sort of control. Uh What did I call it? J Let's see what I called it. Oh, JCTL, jump control is what I called it, JCTL. Or not just me, this is what the teacher called it. Um, so J, JCTL, there you go. 
So that's all we need for the jump instruction is just because we need to get that there. There's a jump module. We just call it a jump module. And then we, we put that through the box. Um, now we have one more instruction, which is, which is branching, but here someone sent me a question. Someone sent me a question from, uh, after finishing, after finishing explaining this, could you show how you would go about answering question four on the sample exam? It looks like it to add multi-cycle, but for multiplication. So let's look at question four. Design a digital system that multiplies two 8-bit unsigned binary numbers by repeated addition method. For instance, to multiply 37, the digital system adds the multiplicand three times. Let the multiplicand be in register BR, the multiplier in register AR, and the product in register PR. A full adder circuit adds the contents of BR to PR, serves one PR, a zero detection circuit. Checks the contents of AR when it becomes zero after each time it's decremented. Design an optimal data path of the circuit showing the size and control the size and control signals for each hardware component. Develop an ASM chart for the following system control unit with minimum number of state boxes. Um, I don't really know what that last one's saying, but we can do the other parts. Develop an ASM chart for the system control unit. Oh, ASM chart for the system control unit with minimum number of state boxes. Okay, I guess that makes sense. Um, yeah, we'll do that after. So that's not that's not exactly a that's not adding to the multi-cycle. That's just basically start from scratch. Just say you have access to these two registers, BR and AR, or and, and PR, I guess. Um, and and then use those values somehow with some other additional circuit circuitry in there. And it would do it in multiple clocks, right? It has to do it in multiple clocks. Well, it doesn't have to do it in multiple clocks, but it says it says by repeated addition. So it has to do it in multiple clocks in that case. So yeah, okay. So so we'll do we'll deal with that after. Let's finish our multi-cycle, but yes, we can definitely do that after. So the, the next thing we want to add is branching, right? So the next thing I'll just write it here, branching. So branching actually has a little a little bit to it. So the, you know, we want to add, for example, BEQ, right? We want to add BEQ. So if we want to add BEQ, let's remind ourselves how we added BEQ for the single cycle, right? To add BEQ or to get BEQ working. Um, what did I do here? <laughs> what was BEQ? Oh yeah, we check, we check the condition. I guess I could just explain it down here. To get BEQ working, right? We, we need to um, figure out where we're branching to we need to check the uh, condition and then we need to branch to that location if necessary, right? if the condition's true. Now that would make it seem like we have two compute steps, right? That would make it seem like we have two computes that we have a compute step for figuring out the address we're branching to and then another compute step to figure out where we're, uh, if we're branching or not, some subtraction between the two things. Instead of doing that, what we do is we say in the decode step, the ALU is doing nothing always, right? So for example, in the, in the fetch step, the, the ALU is doing PC plus four. In the decode step, it's doing nothing. In the compute step, it's doing something. And then in the memory, I guess in the memory, it's not doing anything either. But that's too late, right? <laughs> that's the last step. That's too late to do anything useful. But in the decode step, the ALU is still doing nothing. So the solution is just say, always in the decode step, the ALU is going to be computing the branch address where we're branching to, regardless of if the instruction even is a branch instruction. It's just always gonna compute that value so we have it. In the case that it is a branch instruction, we're gonna use that value. But regardless, it's gonna always gonna compute it in the decode step. So that's what the multi-cycle CPU does. In the decode step, and this is controlled by the ALU control, uh, in the in that step, it's always going to compute the uh, the decode the the branch address in the decode step. So there's not too much to add because what's BEQ? Let's scroll back up here, get our BEQ definition. So for branch on equal, um, we have our uh, uh, RSRT. This PC plus four plus branch address. Remember, PC plus four, we have that value now. We have that value stored in um, the PC after the fetch step, right? Once fetch the fetch clocks on the fetch step, like at the end of the fetch step, we clock. 
PC plus four is now stored in PC, which is a little bit of a confusing way of saying it, but PC plus four or the previous PC plus four, which is the new PC value is stored here. So that's like PC prime is now stored in here. That's PC prime. We need to add the branch address to it, right? That's what we're going to do in the decode step. So again, we're going to take the PC value that's going to come through here and we need to add the branch address. Now remember the branch address is the sign extended shifted left by two version of the immediate value. So we just do that. We take the sign extended shifted left by two version. So we have the sign extended version of the immediate. We need to have another path here that splits off. So how did I draw it here? I drew it kind of like in here. How did I draw it? Yeah, I drew it, I drew it here. So the, the wire kind of goes like this. And then we have a sign, uh, not, we did a sign extend already. We have a shift left by two, and that's going to be just another input into the MUX. Specifically for the decode step, specifically for where we're computing this, this branch. Um, so that's it. That's the whole addition. Oh, sorry. There's actually one more addition because now when we compute this, now we have the value stored and we're going to have that value stored, um, like in the decode step, we're going to compute this branch address and that's going to be in the ALU. And then we need to control, we need to test in the compute step. The compute step is going to be testing whether or not this actually has uh, the potential, like if this is actually supposed to branch or not. And that's going to be this whole subtraction. And then we're going to take the zero flag and that's going to tell us whether or not we actually want to take this value, this value here, right? Uh, no, not this value. Yeah, this value here, right? This wire, this value like that, whether we want to actually put that in the PC, which would be PC plus four plus the branch address. So altogether, that's this picture here. And we're pretty much done. Just last last picture. I just have a couple. Um, I just have a couple of signals. I believe. Yeah, yeah. This one. Yeah, this there. Yeah, this is I C T L. I C T L. Yeah. Yes. Yes. CC2, is that what I, like, where did I write that? Here, this, yeah, yes. It does. It definitely looks like CC2, but that I do mean uh, shift. Clear here, <laughs> it's clear. Um, so yeah, so that's something to keep in mind is that the D, in the decode step, we're always computing um, PC, we're always computing PC prime, which is PC plus four, plus the branch address. Even if it's not a branch, even if it's not a branch instruction, just to have it ready. It's four thirty, so I do still want to talk about control for this. So I'm just going to keep moving. But feel feel free to ask questions if you have any questions. I still want to do some examples of pipelining, so we're, you know we'll do the best we can in, in, in the time we have. But it'd be nice to talk about control a little bit, right? So we always start with the fetch step. So in the fetch step, I guess I'll just draw it here. In the fetch step, let's think about a R type instruction or load word. Let's think about load word. Right, we're doing load word. So in the fetch step, we need to uh, place place uh, instruction in the instruction register, and we need to compute PC becomes PC plus four. That's what we're doing in the fetch step. So what are our control signals? Let's just go through each one. So I or D, this guy, is going to be set to zero. I or D is going to be set to zero because we need to have this value from the fetch step is just getting the instruction in the instruction register. So we need to have that to zero and we have that here. Then um, mem read should be set to zero. Oh, it should be set to one. I mean, because we do want to read from this and mem write should be set to zero because we don't want to write. So mem read is one because we do want to read. So we do want the value to come out here. And IR write is one. Okay, so that's that handles that the instruction is now in the instruction register. Because when we clock, that is that information is going to be put into the instruction register. Now we need to deal with the PC plus four thing, right? So over here, 
ALU source is going to be zero because we need the PC value. So ALU source A, I mean, ALU source A is going to be zero because we need to get the PC value to be able to add four to it. Am I going to sneeze again? No, I'm not. Okay. No, maybe I am. No, I'm not. Always tricks me out like that. Okay. And then for ALU source B, ALU source B, ALU source B is going to be, we need the four going in, right? Because we're doing PC plus four. So it's ALU source B is going to be one. Or I guess it's a, it's a, it is a two bit signal. So it'll be zero, one. Um, and that's it. Oh, and sorry. And then we still have this ICTL or JCTL, which I guess it shouldn't be called JCTL because it also controls things other than, than just that. Um, but J C T L C T L, uh, right. So, uh, what we want is this wire. We want this wire. So we should be zero. Zero, zero. Anything else I forgot here? I or D, we said. Uh, mem write, mem read. I R write, we said. A L U op. Oh, yeah, A L U op. No, yeah, what did I say? A L U op is terms we don't want to use funk. Yeah. A L U op is this. So it's a little, kind of a little confusing, but basically, A L U op, the value of A L U op, how, how I understood it when I was in this course, is that uh, if A L U op equals one, this means don't use funk if instead use whatever based on what the control unit tells you to do if alu op equals zero this means use funk so for us alu op alu op is one we don't want to use funk we want to just do what the control unit will tell us to source a source b pc enable pc enable should be one for sure Right, because we need we want to be able to write to it. So um, uh, this is PC enable should be one because we have to be able to we have to be able to write to the PC. And then register write equals zero. That's kind of just a, just the thing here, but just to make sure we don't write to it. That's fine. That that's not super important. You, I mean, the real list is going to have all of this, but I don't want to go through every single every single signal. Um, like. It doesn't really matter what this one is. It doesn't really matter what this one is. Well, this one matters. Sorry, <laughs> these two would matter, but it doesn't really matter what this one is. It doesn't matter these ones. We're not using those values in this step, so it's not super important. So for the rest of them, I I, I just want to save a little time to not have to write everything. Um, so I, I have it already written here. Uh, let me disable spell check. Disable spell check. Um, so what I just said was that's. This is this is state one, which is fetch, which is what I, I exactly what I just said. This is all exactly what I just said. Then in state two, it's the decode step. Remember, in the decode step, what we're doing is two things. We are um, decoding or decoding register fetch, loading A and B with the right values. But we're also um, oh PC enable equals zero. We don't want PC, update PC anymore. Oh, did I write this before I added? Uh, I think I wrote this before I added the information about... Oh, interesting. I didn't realize I did that. Okay, so there's actually more that we're doing here. So some of this is wrong. Let's correct this because because uh, because uh, some of this is wrong. So we uh, we are we do want PC enabled to be one. Or no, sorry. We don't want PC enabled to be one. We want PC enabled to be... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That depends on JCTL which depends on the result here. Oh yeah, okay, that does make sense actually. Sorry, let me look here. Computation, branch, data read. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, this might not be wrong. So in this step, we're decoding register fetch, but we're also computing branch address plus PC plus four, right? We're, we're gonna be it. So PC now holds PC plus four, but we're not actually gonna assign the value yet. So PC enable should be zero. We're just gonna compute PC plus four plus immediate sign extended that whole thing. So A enable equals one. That just means that we do okay. Let's deal with the computing PC plus four plus branch address. Let's deal with that first. So to do that, we need to have this source to be zero again because what's here right now is PC plus four. Because in the in the fetch in the fetch stage we did PC plus four, so now PC plus four is there. 
Now we're going to compute BC plus four, and we're going to add that to um, this value here, right? This ALU source B should be one, one. And that value is going to be put into this latch right here. So ALU latch should be one. Did I put that here? I didn't. So I actually did forget that. So you're writing these notes. So there is a, there's a couple more things here, right? So, so we need to still have ALU source A to be zero, ALU source B to be one, one. So ALU source A to be zero, ALU source B to be one, one. Again, this is for computing PC plus four plus branch address. And then we need ALU latch to be one because we do want to latch that in. Because the reason we need to latch that in is because we still need to compute. If this is a branch instruction, we still need to compute whether or not this is a, uh, whether or not we are going to branch or not. And that's going to need the ALU. So ALU um, latch equals one. And then, uh, and then um, uh, that's it really, because we just need to store that value there for now. Um, PC enable is going to be zero. So I already wrote that here, right? Because we don't want to update it in this step. We're just going to say zero. So it doesn't matter what's coming in. It's just, it's not going to update. Okay. So th that little correction there adds, adds the, uh, you know, PC plus four plus branch address, which is always computed in the decode step. So I'll add that to my notes after. So that's there. So the other steps, I, I, I do want to talk about pipelining, so I'm going to probably end this section here. Um, but the other steps are there, right? So uh, are, are in my notes, the exact same lists, right? So state three is address computation. Basically, uh, for load word, this would be computing the address that we're going to um, or that we're loading from. Um, this is you know reading the data from the memory. And then stage five is, you know, register write, basically, right? Writing to the writing to the register. And so what we kind of just outlined is this on the control, on the control graph, right? So some of these, some I mean, I, I basically my writing kind of matches these. That's why I have these weird names. But basically, my writing for the most part matches these. Although some of this is some of this was weirdly written. This is from my professor's notes, but. Anyway, so this is uh, this is kind of the the data flow, the control flow that we're talking about, right? Is we have the fetch instruction, we have the decode. That always happens, right? And this reflects what I was discussing before about how B, how about it always computes the branch address, right? Then from here, right? From here, it breaks up depending on what you're doing. So if you're doing a load word, right? Then what you need to do is you need to compute the memory address. You need to access the memory, and then you need to actually complete the instruction, right? Um, whereas if you're doing an R type, we just need to execute it, save it. So it's only one, two, three, four. Like we saw before, it was only four cycles. And yeah, so hopefully that makes sense how we can come up with these values. I think you know, it's like someone emailed me and asked to talk about the control a little bit, and so uh, hopefully this makes sense how you would come up with these control values yourself, right? I think it really just comes from understanding what every part is doing here. So that's why I went to draw every part here, like what every part is doing here. And then you just follow through, you just follow where the data is going to go. And you say, okay, what, what do I want here? Well, I want for load word for the fetch for fetch. I want zero here because I need to get that instruction from the address that's currently being pointed to by the address of the PC. And then from there you can propagate everything through. Right. Um, and yeah, so hopefully that makes sense. That's probably all my discussion. I mean, definitely all my discussion about multi-cycle. It took way longer than I thought it was gonna was gonna be. Um, so I think I think it's time to move on to pipelining. But uh, yeah. So all good with all good with this. If there's anybody has any questions, feel free to let me know. Um, otherwise, let's start pipelining. So pipelining is basically we're going to kind of undo all the progress we just made here in a way, right? We decided we're going to reuse a bunch of components in order to make it so that each instruction uses as many of these components as possible. What if instead we went back to the single cycle model and we said, okay, but we're back at the single cycle model, but what, when this is done being used, 
just start the next instruction already. Because we can just start fetching the next instruction. So, so we'll need separate instruction and data memory again, right? The immediate offshoot of that is we need separate instruction and data, and data memory because you can't access two, memory, two pieces of memory from the same memory module at the same time. And so th that's the idea, basically. It's just like once something's done being used, just start the next instruction, literally like the next one in line. Um, and so that's called, that's pipelining. I'll skip the laundry analogy. I'm sure you've seen the laundry analogy, right? Um, and so, so basically that's what we're going to do with instructions here, but instead of computing the, but, but yeah, that's what we're gonna do with instructions. <laughs> no, no, instead, <laughs> that's what we're gonna do with instructions. It's probably best to just like start with an example here. Cause I'm sure, you know, the introduction to, to pipelining, I'm sure that's all fine. So let's, um, let's do this. Let's do this example here. It's example 4.20. In the textbook, it says uh, problems in this exercise refer to the following instructions. Um, and then the first question is find all data dependencies in this instruction sequence. So the issue with pipelining is that you might not be ready to start the next instruction, right? And that's called a hazard when you're not ready to start the next next instruction. And then we have methods to deal with those hazards, right? Um, so the different reasons you might not be ready for this one reason is you might not be ready to start the next instruction. Let's say you're adding something in one instruction. In the next instruction, you're using the result of that add to add to something else. Well, if that's the case, you don't know what the result of the first edition is yet before you're starting the next one. So that's a data that's a data hazard there. Right? Um, a control hazard is when we have a branch and you don't know what the next instruction is going to be, right? Uh, before the compute step, right? Because again, we're assuming all instructions have uh, fetch, decode, compute, r register, r register write is next or memory is next. Memory is next and then register write. Well, re just say register write with a W, right? Fetch, decode, compute, memory, register write. So if you start the instruction, let's say this is our, yeah, I mean, I guess I'll just do it some examples here. So let's say this is add, right? And then, it's another add, but what we're adding here is the result of this, right? So the result of this addition, we know right there, right? We know that re result right there, um, basically. But okay, let's actually be a little bit more clear. We know it, we know it, like it'll be a little more meticulous here. We know it here, because that's when that value is written back to the register, right? Written back to the register. But if we want to start the next instruction here, fetch, decode, um, compute, memory, write, this compute step happens before we're done writing, right? So that is a, da a data hazard because we don't know the data till here. Now, now, in actuality, oh yeah, sorry, someone saying something? This might be a little bit ahead, but for pipeline data hazards, we can really only have raw read after write hazards and nips like we can't have right after right and right after right because of how it's executed so let me so for pipeline data hazards we can really only have read after write hazards and nips we can't have a right after right so okay so read after write hazard is where you're trying to where you're trying to read the value what are you trying to do you're trying to read the value before before it's written I guess, or you're trying to write, yeah, you're trying to read the value before it's written, because that is the one we have in MIPS, where you're trying to read the value before it's before it's written. Um, so the other one is you're trying to write the value before it's written, but you could have that, couldn't you? Like you can't, you can't have write, right? And then write after read is, I, um, I'm just unfamiliar with the, yeah, with the, I know what you're, I, I think I get what you're saying. I'm not, I, I, I'm not sure the answer. We definitely have right, like if, if I understand correctly, write after, read after write is what we have, where you're trying to read the value before it's written. I would call it read before write, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll do some more examples. Like this example, we'll go through some of the dependencies and then maybe you can see there if, if some of those match your, your claim. Um, yeah. So 
in fact, let's just get right into the, this instruction, this this example here, and then we can uh, we can do it. So this uh, these instructions here, it doesn't really matter what they do, but uh, they all take. We're gonna assume they all take four clocks: fetch, decode, compute, memory, and register, write. I always forget the order. <laughs> so for instruction one, uh, you know, on the first clock, it's gonna be fetching. By the way, sorry, I forgot to mention this. Like, there's a different architecture for this, uh, for for the for the uh, pipeline. Like, it's not exactly multi-cycle. It, it's it's a little different. I guess I should show a picture of that. But that's not the most important thing, and that's also probably not what you're gonna be asked about on the on the exam. At least, at least I would assume so. Um, I would assume it's a question like this, exactly like this, where you have where you have some sort of instructions, and you need to figure out dependencies, and you need to figure out how you're supposed to fix those. This is the pipeline CPU, right? And basically, you just break up fetch, decode, compute, memory, and this is this is right to register, right there. And that that is just you you just completely separate them. These big blue lines are big register files, basically, or just big registers. And they can, you know, for our purposes, they have an unlimited amount of register spots that they can store information on. Or whatever, an arbitrary amount, and you can just send the value through. So it's kind of like you're saving the state. You're saving the state of the circuit as it's going through in these big blue bars, and that's going through like that. Um, so this is without a forwarding module. So we'll talk about forwarding in a second. Um, so this instruction here, it's going to do fetch one, and then on the second clock, the it's going to do um, decode one. And instruction two is going to start with fetch one. Those two can happen at the same time, right? Then on the third clock, it's going to be compute one and it's going to be decode one. Um, and and then, you know, you, you can get it. But now we're going to look for dependencies here, right? So fetch, decode, uh, memory, and then register write, and then compute. Sorry, this is two, my bad. This is two. This is memory two, and this is write two. Um, so this is the fifth one, and this is the sixth clock. Yeah. So uh, let's look for dependencies. Add R1, R2, R1. So that means R2 plus R1, like R1 becomes R2 plus R1. R2 plus R1. So um, the, uh, the next instruction requires R2, or load word, yeah, load word, which is stored in address R, stored in R2. And then where we're storing it is zero plus R1. So we need to know the value of R1 before this instruction goes, right? So uh, let me just see here. Yeah. So instruction two needs information from instruction one, basically, is kind of how you would write the dependency here. But specifically, um, we want to think about the earliest time that this information is known. So when's the earliest time that R1 is known? Well, it's not known here. We're just fetching the instruction. It's not known here. We're just fetching the instruction. But it's known here, right? At the end of C1, we know the value of R1. We know this value of R1, like the final value of R1, is known at the compute step. And so when do we need that value? Well, load word 0 R1. So when we're doing, whenever we're doing 0 plus, 0 plus R1, that's at the compute step. So these depend on each other. In other words, C2, C2 requires C1. And you can't write, write it like that. Like C2 is taking in C1 as input. Um, so yeah, that's basically that. And so this is okay. This, this, like, this is not too big of a deal because technically with this circuit, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be okay <laughs> because, uh, this circuit, you can only know the value of R1 after the write step. But if we include forwarding, then we can solve these data dependencies on their own. Let's, let's uh, focus on the data dependencies to begin with, um, but you would solve this by forwarding. You'd solve this one by forwarding. So C2 depends on C1 because the, we're doing A, by the way. The, the computation step of instruction two requires the, the result of the computation step of instruction one. 
And then let's 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 go through. So then load word r1 4 plus r1 needs the value of r1, right? So instruction three, which is the fetch is going to start here f2 d2 c2 and uh, three. <laughs> three, 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 and this is W3, right? The computation step, four plus R1, requires the value of R1. When did we know R1? Well, we knew R1 right here, right? So we can forward it from there, but typically we don't forward over two cycles. So you forward over one cycle, right? You forward over, so like it's not, like the forwarding module doesn't allow for that. To forward over two two clocks so you forward over one clock so the information from c1 has propagated to the memory now or at least it's in the memory stage doesn't mean it's going into the memory but it's within the memory it's within the memory section now right here and we can forward that um to uh we can forward that to c3 so c3 requires information from memory one I'm kind of describing forwarding at the same time here. I didn't really mean to be describing forwarding at the same time, but I, I am. So forwarding is where we just connect a wire up. Like we just literally hook up a wire so that it can skip. Like there's like skip connections here between the stages or backwards or whatever. Actually, it's actually backwards. Um, and uh, so uh, let's just show a picture of that. Uh, is this the forwarding unit? Yeah. No, that's a little too much. Let's see this here. No, but that's too little. Let's see where is the. Okay, I don't. I don't actually like this picture, but it, I don't really have a better one. This is confusing because it just it just omits the fetch stage. So just forget the fetch. Pretend this fetch stage is in here, and then you get this picture. <laughs> that's really that's really it. So this is with no forwarding, which matches what we have right now. And then with forwarding, basically you have this forwarding unit and this forwarding unit just collects a bunch of information. For example, the results of the computation, the, see like the results of the computation and all these other, lots of other things. And it will forward it to whatever module needs it. So here, the compute step needs the result of this compute step. So the forwarding module is a literal wire that's gonna connect this result in to the, the, the ALU for this step. Same thing here, it's just a literal wire is gonna connect the memory to this. Again, forwarding will only do over one step. We do forwarding over one um, uh, clock. So you can't forward past that. Okay, let's just, let's just figure out all the dependencies. We're almost out of time, unfortunately, and I have to go pretty much at, pretty much at five. Um, but uh, let's figure out the dependencies left here and then we can, we can work from there. So then load word, we did load word R1 four, and then or R1 and R2 are going to be or together, and that's going to be resulting in R3. So for instruction four, move this down. Instruction four, we have our fetch four, decode four, um, uh, compute four, memory four, and then you know, write four. I just don't want to move off the screen. Write four. So this is going to be in the seventh clock and the eighth clock. And now we want to uh, just see if there's any dependencies. So for R1, we need to know, so for the, for, we need to know R1 and R2. So when, and we need to know that the compute step. Um, luckily we know R, uh, R1, or sorry, load word. Uh, okay, so R1 is, is being modified in this step right here. So that R1 value, we actually know right here, right at the memory. So remember, R1, what's happening? Ah, what did I do here? R2, yeah, okay, that's fine. That's fine, yeah. So R1 is what we need for this fourth step. That's at the compute step. We need to know R1. R1 is only known after the data is loaded into R1 in the previous step. That's at the memory. That's after accessing the memory. So there's a downwards arrow like this that's going on, right? This cannot be solved by forwarding. In most cases, some cases it can be, but we don't talk about that. So if this cannot be solved by forwarding. You you would need to stall here for for uh, for one clock. Um, so it depends on it depends on the exact module. Like there there is hardware that that can do this, um, uh, because the textbook the textbook describes this that there is hardware that can do can 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 do this. Um, but 
generally we just say it, it can't so you can't forward this i mean it's a dependency but you would need to um we would need to put a stall uh, if we do scheduling do we still do forwarding and stall as well uh yeah yeah so you can still forward um and then yeah it, it, I guess it depends on the exact wording of the question. Like if the question says, the question will tell you what to do most likely, hopefully if the question's written nicely, um, like it'll tell you use, use like reschedule this by changing the order of the instructions, which would be like ins inserting stalls or it'll tell you, you know, um, reschedule this or just include forwarding or show the forward connections um, between the stages or something like that. Something along those lines. Okay, last thing is just R2. So when do we know R2? R2 is known um, after the memory step, memory step two, right? Memory step two. So memory step two is here. So we can forward that information down like that. So C4 needs information from M3. C4 also needs information from M2. I'm just going to verify this matches with what, uh, yeah, M2, 3, yeah, yeah. That matches with what I have written here. So those are dependencies, and there's how, kind of how you would forward it. I mean, you, you, so this you need to stall. You need to stall this. And then if you stall this by one, which just means sort of no op, right? Just basically just do that, right? Then this is not this is not actually an issue anymore, right? This is not an issue anymore because it was written to the register. So we have no dependency anymore if you insert the stall. Well, we have a dependency, but we don't have a forwarding that's going on. <laughs> you don't have a forwarding. But I would still say that there's a dependency that exists here, right? Because the C4 depends on the result of something in stage two. Okay, well, it's five o'clock. So unfortunately, that's our time. I wish I could do more pipelining stuff, but hopefully that was a good just sort of like example question that you might have where you have to identify dependencies and how you would forward. Um, scheduling would just be inserting, instead of inserting no ops, you would just reschedule, like reorder it to um, uh, in, in such a way that the dependencies work out. So for example, if you have later on, if you have like a stack pointer that adds and nothing else depends on that stack pointer, you would move that stack pointer up. That's a pretty common one, the stack pointer, um, instead of inserting a no op. Um, and yeah, there we go. All right, well, five o'clock guys, I'm gonna wrap up now. Uh, I'll stop the recording.